Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint waterfalls three different ways. And so if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So I hope you enjoy. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using three eight inch by eight inch stretched and primed canvases. You can certainly use any substrate or any size that you want. This is just a fun exercise, so whatever is comfortable to you is totally fine. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, deep yellow, green oxide, Mars black, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and fire red. And then for my tools today, I have several brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes, so I can show you different techniques with the various brushes. Let me see if I can get them in some kind of order here. There we go, that's a good order. So I have a three quarter inch as well as a quarter inch flat bristle brushes. I have a number one bristle fan brush. I have a number eight and a number four uh, shaders. These are similar to bright brushes, only the bristles are a little bit smaller and these are synthetic. Then I have a number two round synthetic and I also have a large blender. So this is a natural, it's a blend of different natural bristles. It is short with um, almost like a filbert type of top to it. So those are the brushes that I'm gonna be using today. Of course, you don't need them all, but <laughs> if you'd like, I'm just gonna be demonstrating how they work. Um, if you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will give you a couple of um, the resources that will help you, that could help you through your painting process. <laughs> One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same type of brushes or the same brushes from my brush line. That's there. There's also going to be a link where you can download a free image of my final paintings. So you can, you, you can print those and use them as visual reference as you go through your own painting process. I think that's the, all the info I need to get out and be <laughs> So now all that, there, that there's left to do is start painting. <laughs> so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush with black paint to create just a dark base coat for me to um, create these waterfalls on. I'm gonna be doing three different waterfalls, which is pretty evident since I'm using three different canvases here, but I wanted to show you some different styles um, of waterfalls and how to create them in a nice simplistic way. So by using a dark base, a lot of times when I'm doing my waterfalls, even when I'm using photo references as my inspiration, I do find that I get better result when I start with a pretty dark base and work my way to the lighter areas. So I'm gonna be demonstrating not only um, the different types of water, the way that they can come off of the waterfall, but also a little bit of their surroundings and how those surroundings will affect what the waterfall will look like. Um, I don't know if you're noticing how I'm doing these backgrounds, but I just kind of put that paint on nice, uh, nice full coat, and then I just go back and forth, left to right or top to bottom to just thin it or um, spread it out a little bit. I'm not concerned about perfect coats uh, for this particular uh, background just simply because it is for me just uh, more of an exercise to practice or for me I'm demonstrating but um, if I was doing this on my own I would be doing this as an exercise to practice different techniques and stuff so when I'm in my practice kind of study mode I don't really focus on things being um, as perfect as I as it would be for say a finished painting so when I'm doing these type of painting or these type of studies I just kind of go through them on the quicker side and then once I've got these um, base coats on here if you wanted you could certainly do a second coat I think I'm just gonna let this ride with this uh, single coat I do want my canvases to be dry before I go on to the next step so I gotta hit it with a blow dryer so I'm gonna fast forward the video through this part so you don't have to listen to it but here we go okay 
Okay, so now that my canvases are dry, I'm going to lay down a um, kind of a base coat for what the land would be behind the waterfalls. So I'm, wa I'm using my um, large bristle brush. I'm just kind of washing and drying it. I'm not terribly concerned about it being super clean because I've got a dark background and I like my colors to mix together <laughs> anyways. So I'm going to be doing three different types of waterfalls. One of them is going to be almost like a waterfall in a brook. So we'll see the water really close up. So I'm going to have a little bit of um, kind of reflections of say the woods, which would be greenery and stuff in the water above we'll have the water kind of falling over a rock and then it's going to be landing in um, a pool of water below it. I'm going to have a really tall waterfall that is super long and slender. So I'm going to have some almost like um, cliff ledge greenery around it and it's going to fall and land in a pool of water way down at the bottom. And then I'm going to have a waterfall that kind of cascades over several rocks. Um, on this one and there's a pool down at the bottom. So I want to kind of just get, uh, when I'm building anything, I think of building from the back forward. So I need to put mo the majority of the land on first because the waterfall falls over the land. So in this particular one, I'm going to use my large bristle brush and I'm going to pick up brown, yellow, uh, green and white. Just a teeny tiny bit of all four of those colors on my brush. Up at the top, about the top maybe a quarter of the um, canvas, I'm going to just uh, almost give these uh, squiggly type of marks in order to give myself what will be kind of the ripples of the water up above. There's going to be a flat kind of rock in through here, but there might still be some greenery stuff. Um, or some moss or something on top of that rock. Uh, and then down in the pool below, I'm going to have it having some bluish tones. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my blue and I'm just going to kind of pop in on my dirty brush. I popped in some bluer tones into this area down below. I'm not, you can see, I'm not covering up all of that black area because I want it to um, become part of the um, information for my water later. So that's how I'm going to start that one. I'm going to wash and dry my brush again for this guy over in through here. And just know that because I used a black background, these colors as they dry will get darker. So that's just going to be the start of that. This one in through here, I want there to be some greenery and stuff. Um, so again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my green, yellow, brown, and that's where I'm going to start. I'll put a little bit of white in, in a little bit, but I want it a little bit darker up in through here. So I'm not going to use um, the white on it. And same thing with kind of down in through here. Just going to get this um, soft base behind it. I want it to look like it's go going up into the sky up in through here. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white and blue and just kind of lightly tap that in up at the top on my dirty brush. Again, just nothing fancy here. I'm just giving myself some kind of atmosphere. And then over on the sides in through here, I'm going to just pick up a little bit of green, yellow, brown, and white. And I'm just tapping in what would be maybe some, some bushes and stuff kind of coming down the sides. Again, think of this as just an exercise. It's not intended to be um, perfect here. I just want to give us something that we can... Um, build our waterfall on and then down in the pool below that's going to um, end up being really dark so I just picked up a little bit more black on my dirty brush and I'm just going to kind of allow myself to put um, a soft layer of whatever the remnants on my brush are. So that'll start that one. Then on this one I want there to be some kind of platforms with rocks so I'm going to pick up um, brown, again, I didn't wash my brush, <laughs> brown, green, yellow, white, and a touch of red. So this will give me some different um, tones. I'm going to hold my brush down like this, and I'm going to give myself kind of these little platform type of areas. So you can have as many as you want. 
You can make them big, you can make them small. I think the gist here is to um, have them a little bit um, brighter at that, at that edge, which is why I'm kind of pushing my brush like this and then rubbing it back. So this is just gonna give me different kind of rock platforms um, throughout this um, exercise, <laughs> throughout this little um, display that I'm doing so I can have that. I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red and blue also on my brush just so I can get maybe a couple of different tones in through here. So those will be my rocks that my um, that my waterfall will come off of. You could even have a big kind of um, side to the rock, red and blue, just kind of, and whatever else just landed on my brush and through there. So maybe this is just another rock that just kind of comes down and through here. And then I'm gonna have a big pool that it's gonna land in here. So I'm gonna pick up more uh, yellow, green, and white, and I want it to be lighter down at this bottom left. So something like that. And then just letting myself kind of run out of paint as it gets back towards that darker area. So something like this, we'll, we'll start this one out. So this will be the pool of water down at the bottom of this one. So once I've got my start, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, is there any other um, information that I wanna put into that landscape before I start building my, um, my waterfall? And I think for me, I am gonna want probably more blue in through here, but I don't really need much there. I do need a little bit in through here, and I think I want a little bit more up in that water. So now I'm picking up my um, number eight shader. And what I'm gonna do is just enhance any of this little land or surrounding areas that I need. So up in, in the top water area, I'm picking up some yellow, green, and white so I can have more distinct kind of um, movement to this water up above. It's gonna fall over the edge right in through here. So this is just enhancing that little bit of water. If I want there to be any little um, mossy areas within, this is gonna be behind the waterfall. I can just kind of take my brush. I just picked up a little bit more green and just kind of making some little messy marks, maybe a little bit of brown and red, just to kind of, this is all gonna be behind this section right here is gonna be behind the water. So I don't need it to do anything fancy, just kind of some mimicking some marks. And then down in through here, I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit more blue and um, blue and white, and maybe put a little bit more movement into the water going down in this direction. So just a little bit more lightness in there, and that looks pretty good to me. So that's good for that one. This one, I don't feel like I really need to do much. Gonna wash my brush just in case I feel I wanna do anything else to it. Um, maybe just soften up and through here a bit. So maybe just a little bit of white and blue. Maybe just soften that little area coming out from the sky in through that area. That looks good. And then over in this area, maybe just enhance the edges of those rocks a little bit. So I could even go black white and brown um, to enhance some of the edges of these rocks. Again, you can make them into whatever you want. I'm just thinking that they're little platforms. So I want them to just kind of, I want the water to just fall right off of them. They, they don't have to be um, exactly as mine. I can just think of this as like an exercise. Don't think of it as a fully, um, realized painting. Maybe this one kind of comes down like this. That looks pretty good. And then in through here, maybe a little bit more information, red, white, brown, give some little, some little dots and textures in that water so it's not just um, one solid color. There we go. And that looks good to me. So once I've got that done, now I'm going to start building my waterfalls. So if your backgrounds are really wet at this point, you may want to hit it with a blow dryer, which I'm going to do. <laughs> so, sorry, blow dryer number two is happening right now. Oops, I put it over here, so. Let's get it dry. All right, so now that I've got it dry, now I'm going to just approach the waterfalls. I like to start the water coming in the in the coming out of the wherever it's falling from <laughs> I like to approach it kind of uh, as a um, 
work from the dark to the light. So as I'm doing these, I'm going to start with some gray tones um, and build my way to the lighter tones. This one over here is going to be really close to the viewer or we're going to see the water closer. So this is going to have a lot more colorful reflections of what would be the sky and any greenery around it. This one's going to be really far off and out of focus and then this one's going to kind of be in the in the middle of that focal spectrum. So I'm going to actually start with my um, quarter inch bristle on this one to get them um, into place with their darker tones and then I'll build my way to the light. So this one in here, I'm definitely going to be using a lot of blue. Um, so I'm going to actually pick up a little bit of blue, black, and white on my brush. So this is going to give me kind of like a grayish blue type of tone. My fall is coming right off of the edge here. It's really important I, for me anyways to understand where the fall is happening. So if the water's coming out here, it's going to take... Um, gravity is going to take over. So I'm going to have this kind of coming like this and then falling down to wherever that pool is. So my pool for this one is kind of in this vicinity. I'm going to pick up a little bit more blue so you can kind of see where it's going to be um, landing, if you will. And it takes on whatever the movement is um, for that water. So if it's kind of coming from here and then it falls down. Gravity is going to take over and I'm going to just allow this to um, have a smoother kind of look to it than the other ones are going to have. So again, I've got it coming from this layer or from this edge and then it kind of just shoots down. It's got to curve out and then fall down. Curve out and then fall. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be super straight um, as it's falling, but you want that kind of curve at the top. So I think this one's pretty good for um, where it's beginning. And then my, if I want to in include some of those blue tones down in through here as it's splashing and hitting the water this way. And then this one is going to be kind of just going down the brook in this um, in this fashion. So that's pretty good for the start on that one. This one over here, I feel like I want to do more gray tones. So I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to start with black, brown, and white on my brush. So I like to put the three colors on my brush. And of course you could pre-mix a color if you wanted to, but I'm just starting with these colors and let happen what's going to happen. I want my fall to come out somewhere in this vicinity. So this one is going to have these little shoots of the falls coming out of the greenery. So this is a very, think of it like a, um, like in a, a deep forest somewhere <laughs> and it's got um, lots of different, um, you know, inlets or outlets of the water. I think I'm going to have it land somewhere in this vicinity. So that, that'll be my, my main part of the fall. I've got lots of little ones kind of coming out and through here. So I'm going to just allow myself these little, these little bits of trickling and little shoots of uh, areas coming out of the, um, out of other areas. Maybe there's a couple coming out maybe in through here. I like to try and keep them inconsistent so it'll look like um, it is definitely taking on um, Mother Nature's way. <laughs> and then so this one is going to have a lot of uh, almost fogginess to it because it is coming, uh, we're seeing it at a, a real distance. So that's where I'm, I'm taking my brush more on this one and kind of rubbing it. I'm going to have it hit the, the water in through here, the pool of water in through here. So again, I'm just taking that grayish tone that was created and just allowing myself to mystify <laughs> the bottom where it's hitting that, that water area. And then it can even have these little kind of ripples that are um, going farther away from that kind of central place of where it's hitting the water. So that'll start that one. And then over in through here, I think I'm going to change up my color a little bit and make it more of like a bluish green. Like maybe this is a tropical little 
um, water plays. So I'm going to actually take blue and a touch of yellow and mix those together and that's going to give me almost like a more of a bluish green type of a color with a tiny bit of white as well and this will start me off for, oops that was a little bit too much yellow, this will start me off for my tones on this water. So you can really, you know, have any any color combination that you want um, but just something darker than white is going to allow that the water to look like it's got texture. So on these ones the water is going to be the brightest where it's falling off the rock. So if I have a rock here I've got my, I'm not going to have a lot of water on my brush so or a lot of paint on my brush, <laughs> a lot of water. Um, so it's got to be coming from somewhere. So if it's coming from, let's say, off my canvas here, and it's going to come down and hit this rock in through here, or somewhere on this rock, it hits the rock, and then it comes out, and then where is it going to go from there? This one, maybe I make this one come straight down. The, I think it's also important to note that I don't have a lot of paint on my brush at the moment. Um, so this way I can get it to go a little bit transparent. So you could even use a little bit of water on your brush too. So if let's say I have another one, the, the water is coming somewhere from here, it's riding along this rock here, and then it falls maybe to this rock in through here, maybe it hits here, and then travels some more like this, and then comes off this way. So you can create whatever type of um, display that you want. It may be, uh, maybe it's coming like this and it, maybe I've got just these little kind of tiny trickles in through here. So wherever that water is coming from, it's got to travel down that surface and then fall to the next surface. So this surface could be diagonal. So maybe these, these pieces of water go diagonal and then they fall. So you can you can imagine it to be whatever way. Maybe this one even has, maybe the rock that it's traveling down goes this way and then it falls off and hits this one right in through here. And then this, we already designated this as kind of a slide. So maybe we've got the water coming down here and then this one just kind of lands here. This one lands here and this one can land. Let's make this one land here. So that'll tell the viewer that this rock might be out farther than the others. So just kind of understanding where you want or just imagining once you've got your rocks in place, how that water is kind of falling off of each one of them. I'm going to pick up a little bit of black plus my um, plus that color because I have a couple of little um, unfinished areas in through here that I can just add a little bit more of my waterfall to and that'll, that'll make that look nice. Got something like that and this maybe this one goes right down into here and hits this one again so you can have multiple falling locations this i find a lot like in um if you have images of like cliffs with um one main water source up top and then it gets um uh the, and it has the lots of rocks on it and stuff that will i just put a little bit of white on my brush just to lighten up those edges a little bit and then that's how I'm going to start that one. So now that I've got the start of them, I'm going to go back to this close one. I'm switching brushes now to my, um, actually I'm going to go back to that number eight um, shader because I can get some good uh, clean lines with this one. So this one I, I definitely want to have reflections of the stuff in the surrounding areas. So I'm going to, I started with just white and I'm going to, again, light spot is going to be pretty much up at the top where it's starting to fall over the fall, something like this, because it's got my light sources up top. And then I can have these little really clean kind of sparkles, if you will, um, coming down into that, um, into the water in through here. Because this one's close up, it's going to have a lot of um, the surrounding colors from the um, whatever is in that atmosphere. And the atmosphere is the objects or air or space around it. So if this is in a forest, um, 
it would probably have lots of greens and yellows and maybe some blues from that sky or from the trees or from whatever else is in that area. So I'm right now just using white in order to get um, some, some brightness into here. So just put in some white. It's going to splash and land somewhere in through here. So I'm just adding some, some of that texture where it would be landing and splashing into that water. So I'm just really pushing my brush and just kind of wiggling it around in order to give it that, um, that uh, movement as it's coming down. And you can continue to add more lightness to it. I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush just so I can get a little bit more fluidity with the, with the brush stroke. Once I've got a lot of the lightness in through here that I want, just kind of making sure I keep my brush stroke in the, in the direction that I want it to go. And I think one thing that I know when I started doing waterfalls that was a, um, a barrier, if you will, was trying not to overdo it because you really, you know, as you're go going through these, the, the motion of the water, it's like you, you find a color and you find a, a, a way that you want to move your hand and all of a sudden you just keep on doing it. <laughs> and by the time you're done, you've covered up everything that you started. Um, so just trying to keep control over the motion. You can even, I just put more water on my brush to put some transparency into some of these um, downward motions in through here so you can still see the stuff behind it but you can still see that there is water. So now I can add any other colors on top of this I want. I can add a little bit of green if I want to um, provide some of that reflection from the surrounding um, Oops, that was a little bit too much from the surrounding um, atmosphere. So, and I'm doing it in this directional brush stroke. Then I can go ahead and add, I wipe my brush off. I can pick up some yellow. Maybe we've got some, some yellow in, in the atmosphere as well. Just kind of adding some, some highlights to that water. Now I can, I'm going to wash my brush and maybe I amp up that blue. So maybe I wash my brush and I put a little bit of my ultramarine blue on here. And this is going to give you those reflections of the sky. So I laid down that white in order to um, give me the lighter base to provide myself with these um, very vibrant tones within the water. I am going to let this one dry and come back in a minute with maybe a couple um, more little pops of brightness on it. So that one's good the way that it starts for me. I'm going to move on to this one, uh, this one right here. I think I'm going to be using my fan brush for this, this next one in through here. So with the fan brush, you can get a lot of individual streaks. Um, I'm using a, I'm doing it in a smaller area. You can get a lot of different streaks. You can also do a lot of great texture with it. I'm using it for this one because I want to kind of get like this almost pulsing look in uh, this big one. I want to get a lot of little tiny streaks in these guys over here. So by using the brush, the, the fan brush, with a, for me, I'm going to use it with a little bit of water on it, and I'm going to start with a touch of white and water on my brush. So I'm getting it. My I'm using a bristle brush, which is uh, my the bristles are very firm, so this is going to keep them separated. If you're using um, a um, um, a <laughs> A synthetic one, sorry, I just had a little brain freeze there. Your your bristles might stick together, um, providing you with a little bit more difficulty when, when creating these um, individual um, little streaks that come down. Uh, but if you just load the brush on the tip, that with a little bit of water, you'll be able to create these um, these individual streaks. So because I'm using water with my white, it's be it's um, transparent. So it will take on some of those gray tones underneath 
and it'll provide me with this fabulous dimensional um, way about this. This top one, I'm going to put a little bit more white on my brush with less um, with less water, and this is going to give me my really bright tones, and I can also pop out some sprays. So that's where I'm going to get that um, the great movement in it as if it's coming, it's spewing out of that um, land. It's got maybe some some texture as it's coming down. It's like kind of pulsing as it's coming down. Um, again, try not to do too much. That's going to be the um, the hardest part about it. I just put a touch of water on my brush because I felt it was a little bit too heavy. And then once I get down in through here, I can start to really get this to spray. So I can kind of go left to right and then I can even uh, use it in a circular motion as I'm coming up. And again, if the white is too white, don't be afraid to pick up a little bit of gray with it. You could even pick up a little bit of blue. If I pick up a little bit of blue, I'm going to get more reflections of what's going on in the sky. Water is reflective, whether it's spraying or coming down straight, whatever um, you whatever way you're seeing it, it, it can be reflective. So if it's outdoors, <laughs> it can very likely have blue in it. I'm picking up a little bit more blue to increase the colors in these guys over here, these side ones. And then I'm thinking that that's pretty good, maybe a little bit more blue and white on my brush for right in through here. I want this one to really look like the main one in through here. So that looks nice little bit more white and definitely as you're going through it step back and you might find that you you know you really like part of it you want to increase the the brightness of other parts like I just put a little bit more white on my brush to increase this one so again I'm using my my um, fan brush but you could certainly use you could use a small a small detail brush if you want really individual type of marks um, that'll be up to you. And then I can even take this and give myself those little, I'm putting a little bit more water on my brush, um, little additional reflections in that water as it goes away from um, the big splash here. And I'm putting more white on my brush just to tap in this real bright splash. And of course, when it splashes, it doesn't just splash down um, or straight up. It can splash out to the side so you can really get that movement in through there. And if you felt like I feel like I want it a little bit foggier over on this right side, there we go. So that's going to be that one. I will increase the um, maybe um, the greenery around the edges of these guys so it looks like it is kind of coming out of those. I'll do that in a minute, but I want to hit this one over here. I'm going to be using, I think I want to show you how to use the uh, the blender on this one. So again, this is similar to the my bristle brush, only it's got a rounder head and this is a blend of different natural bristles, so it's got a different kind of texture to it. So it's going to pull that paint really nice and it'll give you a nice thin um, look to it. I, won't, I think I want to go for a little bit more of that um, blue and uh, yellow mix, but maybe just a little bit more blue this time. That's pretty. I like that. And I'm going to I'm going to introduce this a little bit more blue tones into this guy and through here. And again, this is just um, allowing myself to really make it feel and look like water to me. Um, I'm keeping it transparent because water is transparent. So this type of brush is going to allow me to almost just rub it onto the canvas, allowing for it to see um, the, the colors that are underneath it. So think of this as almost kind of putting a glaze of sorts onto um, these areas because I'm using it in such a thin fashion and pushing it really hard with this brush, allowing for these um, these colors to just kind of work as um, as glazes. And once I've got that on there, I feel like I want a little bit more of this bluish green in through here. I'm totally digging this color in through here, so I'm just going to keep putting it wherever I want. 
And then I can um, increase the, the light areas where it's coming over the rock with just a touch of white on my dirty brush. So if I want there to appear a heavier spot coming over here, I'm going to use that white. It lands somewhere in through here. You don't even need to totally show that it splashed in through there, but maybe just that little trajectory in through here, and then it is lightest when it comes over that edge so the viewer really understands it. Maybe this kind of comes over here too. So again, the the biggest thing for me is I'm I'm using thin paint with and kind of rubbing it on. So this is going to allow me these translucent, transparent layers and I'm putting it in the general direction of how that how that water would be flowing. So and making it light where the where the light source would hit it most, which is right on these edges that pop out the most. And then as they fall, as it falls to that next one, I let it gravity take over. Of course, it can come out a little bit because there's spray and stuff like that. And it would probably be thinner, which would mean it would look darker as it's getting down towards the bottom. So that's where those, um, those varying tones of from light to dark are going to make it look different and have um, have a more believable appearance. So I keep loading my brush with a little bit of white and that um, that greenish blue. So that way I've got both of those tones in through there. And again, just finding those spots where it's going to kind of um, the direction this is going to be moving in this direction. This is going down that rock. I've got a little bit in through here. So using different brushes is, you know, something that I, I like to do in order to get the, the idea of what, brush, what brushes will work best for me. But I don't always use the same brush for waterfalls. You're seeing I'm using many different brushes to show you how to get these different effects. So you can definitely, as you are discovering or trying to um, find what works best for you, that's going to be a, a real fun place to to go to to find your to find your groove. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to kind of do one more pass on all of them to put my final touches on them. Uh, this one in through here, I feel like I want to go back to my um, my number eight shader to put some extra bright highlights. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint. Um, I feel like I kind of want to merge this in with this upper portion a little bit more. So I'm using this brush to just kind of give the viewer the understanding that the, the, the water is kind of coming down in through here and then it's going to fall right over this edge. And again, you might find that the as as you're going through yours you you love you know one way more than the other you might find that um you love one brush more than the other it's all going to be what you know works best for you again these are different different ways to do it just because the there's so many different variables when it comes to waterfalls be it the light source how that light source is affecting the water is the water close enough so you'd be seeing reflections is it um i mean you can always see reflections in the water but where you can see these distinct colors that are really um really separated from one another is it far away where it's going to look foggy is it um so powerful that it's going to take on that pulsing. So there's so many different variables, but I think a couple of the most important things are the direction of the water, where the water is coming from, that trajectory of the water, um, and how it's kind of on the thinner side. So it will definitely resemble water as opposed to a solid object. Um, and then of course, the I've, again, the direction to me is just a really important piece. So that will, if you can get the motion of the, of the water 
that's going to help the viewer understand where it's going, what it's going over. Like this could be a brook and uh, the water is kind of just going to that right. I can pick up a little bit of green and black even as I'm down in this area down in through here so that viewer kind of understands that it lands in through here. Maybe it splashes up a little bit in through here and then once it lands here then it starts to just kind of travel down this direction in through here. I think that yellow could be dulled down a little bit. There we go. And then mm, thinking, uh, thinking I like this one, but maybe just a couple more little white brights over on these edges. And then on the next one, I think my biggest um, thing that I'm going to want to do to the next one is uh, get those these areas to look like they're coming out of the forest. So I'm going to go back to the um, quarter inch bristle brush to finish out this one. So this one I'm just going to put some little dark areas around the tops of the waterfalls. So just a little bit of black is going on my brush. So this is going to tell the viewer that the that the waterfall is kind of sneaking out of this little spot in the um, in the scenery, in the landscape. And you could even put a couple other little dark areas just around there to make it look like that's the spot in which it's fall, it's falling out of <laughs> this one up in through here maybe I've got an even bigger kind of opening something like that and of course if you wanted to put other little dark areas throughout just find some dark areas that are already kind of started and you can enhance them if you want to and then once I've got the, those dark areas. Now I can, I just wipe my brush. Well, I'm going to wash my brush. And then I'm going to put green, yellow, and white on it. Green, yellow, and white. And I'm going to create these little pops of highlighted um, foliage at the top side of those bushes. So this, again, is just something that's going to um, make my painterly eye happy to finish out the, oh, I missed this little guy here. So we're just going to put, we're going to put some little foliage right up next to it. And this is, you know, I'm just having fun with creating this um, on the fly type of scenery with these little waterfalls just kind of coming out of um, this beautiful, maybe tropical forest or uh, rainforest kind of scenery but you could of course you know this was all about the waterfalls not necessarily the sceneries but this type of waterfall could definitely look like it is um, coming out of this type of um, landscape and then once I've got this one I think that looks pretty pretty good again I'm not concerned too much about the landscape just the waterfall itself. So I've got green on my brush right now, green, yellow, and white. So I can put some of that in the water too as reflections, right? So something like that. And then I definitely feel like I want just a little bit more brightness on a couple of these ones. So washing, draw my brush and picking up. I think I might, I might I'm going to switch brushes to the number four shader, just a little bit of white on my brush, just to make sure that I've got really good control and the pulsing that I wanted to kind of see on this one. So again, I'm just kind of really tapping my brush and allowing for um, some of those grayer areas to still um, be visible, but not all of them. This, again, is just a, another way to create a waterfall. I do want to put some of that I feel like I want some of that greenish blue too. So again, I'm just kind of, I just picked up some of that greenish blue like I have over on that right one because I, I like it and I feel like it um, is going to add quite a bit to this waterfall as well. So this is that greenish blue that I created and I'm just kind of putting it on the dark side in through here just to get this fall to separate. There we go. And then maybe just a little bit more white. So again, as I as I'm building this, I'm thinking I want that dimensional element and I didn't want it to um, be just one solid color. So I want definitely to keep those darker appearances. And then if I feel like I want 
any little extra poofs out in through here, I can do that. That looks nice. And then this guy over here, I don't think I need much to this guy. Um, I think I'm going to go back to that number eight shader. And I think I just need some brightness. I'm going to start with some white, and if I need to do anything else, I, I certainly will. So, again, just kind of finding my, my little light spots definitely on these edges of the rocks. And you can also take um, these light, where I've got the light edges to the water, I could bring in maybe a little bit of red and white and put maybe a little light edge to that rock too. If you felt that um, you could get away with these little highlights on these edges of the rocks, I wouldn't necessarily do the same um, color as the water for the highlights there, but just something to allow for um, those little, you know, the appearance of the edges of those rocks to show up too. If you if you felt you could get away with it, if not, no worries. <laughs> it's, again, it's not about it's not about those. It's about the waterfall on this one. But sometimes I can't control myself picking up more white paint and just kind of uh, making sure that I've got these as bright as I want. And you can see how I worked my way from the dark to the light. And that's allowing for me to um, really get some nice um, texture on these and some great movement to them. But it's all pretty much is a similar process from one to the next. It's just where is that water falling to? How bright do you want the brightest of the bright to be? How powerful do you want it to be? Maybe these get a little bit more energy as they meet the water in through here. And then once you've got it done, of course, you can fiddle with it as much as you want, um, getting it to enter that water, giving a little bit more energy down at the bottom in through here, that frothiness um, versus just kind of um, gentle um, entry. So those are a little different. If it's coming out pretty heavy, that's going to make it a bigger splash when it hits when it hits the, the pool down below, if it's coming, um, if it's just trickling, it might not have this big splash down at the bottom. So just a little food for thought as you're, as you're building yours. And then, of course, if you wanted to sign it, you could certainly sign it. I don't know if I'm going to sign these ones just because they're just little exercises for me. But that, I'm thinking that those look pretty darn cool. I'm happy with the way that they came out. Um, I think that they're all really neat in their own right and hopefully you got a couple of good tips out of how to create some nice uh, different waterfalls and as always I look forward to painting with you again sometime.